what's up? I'm Dr. Duck from 105.1 The Buzz. And I am Skippy from 105.1 The Buzz. And you're watching PDX Bows. On CNW 14, baby. Hey everybody, welcome to the 40th episode of PD Exposed. I'm John Olson. And I'm Heather Frelia. Fat Tuesday, one of the wildest parties, and we bring you the craziest right here in Portland at the Lotus. Now, there was a lot of things that we probably can't show you even on cable TV, <laughs> but what we will show you, you'll definitely dig. Yes, you will. <laughs> bring 300 women together in one room, and what do you get? You get the power of the purse benefit, a benefit for Girls Inc., a very worthy cause. Mm -hmm. And very worthy for me because 300 women in one room. <sighs> Hello. 300 to 1. You were very, very happy. We know. <laughs> PGE Park, one of our favorite venues, and we bring you a special event as the Mariners play the Portland Beavers. And as you well know, we just got back from Japan as we feature Japanese baseball, so we thought only fitting that we interview, or John interview, the most famous baseball player in the world, Mr. Ichiro. I'm still giddy. Days later. It takes a lot to make me speechless. It takes a lot to make us speechless on PD Exposed. The Rose City Rollers did exactly that. It's an all-women's roller derby league right here in Portland. It was absolutely an amazing experience. We know you're going to love it. Serendipity, one of our favorite words, according to John Olson, <laughs> is alive and well as we speak of our featured musician, Storm Large. We had the pleasure of seeing her at Dante's Rockstar Music event, as well as Fat Tuesday and the Rose City Rollers event. Storm's an amazing performer, but she's also got a voice that will melt you, and she's got an awesome band. So don't touch that dial. Petey Exposed will be right back. I'm the Joker's Wild, mascot for the High Rollers. You're watching PD Exposed. <laughs> Ever since the late 90s, the movie Roller Girls, Heather Graham Hottie, I've been kind of intrigued with the whole roller derby scene. Well, turns out we've got it right here in Portland, the Rose City Rollers are at the Expo Center and we are about to learn about roller derby. The way roller derby is played is you have five girls on one team, five on the other. The front girls are your pivots. The middle girls are your blockers, and the back girls are your jammers. Your jammers are your point scorers, okay? So what happens is um, the whistle blows, the pack takes off, and the pack is the blockers and the pivots. The pivots set the pace, and they kind of keep the girls all working together. And then the um, second whistle blows, and the jammers take off. The jammers are the point scorers. So what they do is they have to fight their way through the pack. So basically, I'm trying to help my team, my jammer, get through and block the other team's jammer at the same time. And then um, they come back around, and then the girls fight their way through the pack, and on the second lap through the pack is when the jammers start making points for every girl of the opposing team they pass. All the teams have worked really, really hard. I think they put a lot of extra pressure on themselves to perform, but I think you're going to see a lot of teamwork. we got to represent all four teams, and Breakneck Betty's has a representative here. What's your name? Donna Dededd. Donna Dededd. So I, I get the whole Donna Dededd thing. Why, though? Why, why that name? Uh, my husband chose it. I'm, we're into zombies and uh, horror movies, so it fit right in. Okay, we found somebody with the high rollers, and your name is? Blocker. Wow! <laughs> this interview is over. No. <laughs> How did you come up with that name? My last name's Cox. So it was given to me. You seem kind of like sweet and you know nice and stuff. So when you get out there on the on the uh, rink, you, it's, you're not so sweet and nice. Well, you know, it kind of comes out once it, once it starts. The adrenaline starts running. It just kind of comes out. You'd be surprised.
There's no crying in roller derby. There's no crying in roller derby. There's no crying in roller derby. The Rural City Rollers organization has only been around for two years, and yet, look at this place. It's absolutely packed. This might be my favorite sign at the entire event. Beer in bleachers only. That's a great sign. That means you can't have any water, you can't have any Coke, you can't have any Pepsi, no lemonade. You can only have beer in the bleachers. Portland Roller Derby is going to take over the world. Absolutely. You think? Absolutely. Why is that? That's a pretty big sound bite there. Because those are my girls. The Rose City Rollers is one of the toughest tickets in town and for good reason. You guys, we go to events all the time, all over the place, and this absolutely made our crew speechless. It's an incredible event. If you haven't checked out the Rose City Rollers, it's a must do. No matter what walk of life you're from, you gotta come. But make sure to get your tickets early. Go to RoseCityRollers.com. Never before has a purse been so powerful. We're at the Power of the Purse Benefit at the Portland Art Museum. And Girls Inc. is the benefactor this evening. Now you may be asking what that is. It's a great organization. It's in about 10 metropolitan Portland schools. And it focuses pretty much on girl power. They bring all girls in from all walks of life, get together, work on things of how to keep girls out of drugs and alcohol, um, how to better educate themselves in different areas of science, and just pretty much, you know, how all of us women should stick together. Girl power. Let's go make some money. These purses were designed by all the celebrities behind me here. That was done by Charles Fine Art Portraits. They're getting ready to start here, so we gotta wrap this up. Look at our friend Darcel over here. I gotta see the purse Darcel helped design. That's what's gonna be auctioned off tonight, and that's where a lot of the money's gonna be raised. worth one of the designers whose purse just went for 600 bucks but she didn't just do a purse she did a hat along with the purse in this case it was uh, a few people that kind of came to me and said hey you want to do this for this organization and how could I say no of inspiring girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And Portland is a incredible community full of strong, smart, and bold women. So we thought, well, where's the money gonna come from? It's gonna come from women, and the power is gonna come from the purse. Came here with Fiona and her great-grandma, Dolores. Dolores, you sew all the purses, right? Uh, no, I just sewed that one. Her other grandmother sewed the others. <laughs> so this is definitely a family affair. Yes, yes it is. What made you get into sewing purses, or designing purses, I should say? When I was younger, I was always drawing, so I just decided to get into it. Couldn't contain it. Courtesy of London Influence, PD Exposed and London Influence are giving away a makeover on PD Exposed. You bid like the top amount. They announced it. It was a big deal. What made you like want to do this? I thought this is a fundraiser. I might as well. I wanted to get it, so I might as well just go for the max. Join us for the 7th Annual Alberta Street Art Hop, Saturday, May 20th and Sunday, May 21st. The Oregonian calls it one of Portland's premier events. The locals simply call it The Hop. Last year, over 10,000 people joined us to see premier artists, street performers, local bands, and much more. With a main stage sponsored by Rockstar Energy Drink, this year's Hop is sure to delight all of your senses. 
So join us on Saturday, May 20th and Sunday, May 21st for the 7th Annual Alberta Street Art Hop. Hey everybody, John Olson here, host of PD Exposed, airing every Friday through Monday night on CNW 14 at 7 p.m. Duck here and I want you to go to PDExposed.com right now to cast your vote for your favorites based on 12 categories. We'll bring you those results this summer in a one-hour special, but it's up to you guys to make it happen. So go to PDExposed.com and vote now. PD Exposed is brought to you by PDX Magazine, Portland's where to go, what to do guide, featuring live music, restaurants, nightlife, local sports, and latest trends. Pick up this month's issue today or download your free copy at PDXMagazine.com. This is Governor Ted Kulangoski, and you're watching PD Exposed. Love is the most important thing in the world, but baseball's pretty good too. That's a quote that we saw today from an eight-year-old boy named Greg. And you know what, Greg? We agree with you. We're at PGE Park as the Seattle Mariners take on the Portland Beavers in one of the final exhibition games of the year before the big season starts. It's that time of year. It's time to play ball. Zach Bose joins us on PD Expose, first baseman for the Beavers. What's it like to play for these guys? It's fun, man. This place is well known throughout the Pacific Coast League. As it's visiting teams that come in here often say this is their favorite stop in the Pacific Coast. League. So what do you do in the off season? What do you do when you're not playing baseball? Uh, just train, basically get ready for the for the upcoming season. This past winter, I went into the Dominican Republic and played winter ball down there. That was a good experience. But uh, mostly just try to rest the body for the grind to, for this coming up over the next six months. Joining us is probably the most mega superstar in the world baseball player, Ichiro. Congratulations on Japan winning the World Baseball Classic. What does that mean for Japan and for you? Um. I think not only for Japan, but also for the world, it was very important to have a tournament to determine which country is the best in the world at baseball. I'm very uh, proud and honored that Japan came in first place. How is the game played differently in Japan versus in the United States? American baseball is trying to get a run. Japanese baseball is trying to protect a run. Shinjo was is a big player in Japan. Do you know is, is Shinjo a friend? Not not exactly a, a friend, but of course I know of him. So if you want to look like Shinjo, act like Shinjo and get all the chicks like Shinjo, you gotta dress like Shinjo. Bring it on chicks. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Why is that? なぜですか?知らないのなぜか。僕はあの、ヒットの記録を破ったその、ね、前の記録保持者はジョーシスはそんなことも知らないで質問に来ないでほしいな。He <laughs> said you should know this. The the person I broke the hit record of. No, 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 I knew that. I was at your game. I was at the game. We experienced many, many different kinds of foods in Japan. Very, very different. What kind of American foods do you like? What are your favorite American foods? Pizza? Pizza? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I had pizza for lunch today. So. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us and congratulations on your success. Um, they just added a mother room here, which is fantastic. Really? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what's that? What's that like? It's actually it's a, it's a suite that they converted into basically a nursery um, for mothers that are, need to feed um, or cool. with little kids stuff like that. That's actually where we hung out. It was fantastic. What do you think about this pro baseball in Portland tonight? It's kind of a rainy night, but you're out. You got a smile on your face. Is this fun for you? Yeah. What do you like best about it? Licorice. <laughs> Licorice is your favorite thing about the night? And what do you think about the Seattle Mariners in the house tonight? Well, they're a really good team and I'm hoping that they win.
We're joined by a big fan of the uh, the Portland Beavers, but you also do something else. I bowl. <laughs> and he's the governor of the great state of Oregon. Welcome to PDX Bowl. Thank you. Thank you very now, much. Now, you threw out the first pitch. Yes. You've got to have a you got to have a background in baseball because you hit, you threw a strike. I, I, I call it outside corner, man. It was. It was the outside corner, and I was actually trying to put a little motion on it. And uh, I actually asked him if they put a batter up there, but I was a, they were afraid I'd hit him. You did a good job. I was impressed. So, what do you think about this big event here? The Mariners are in town, taking on the Beavers. Uh, well, what does first this mean? Of all, I, I really want to thank the Mariner uh, franchise for coming down here because I think this is very, very good for Portland. And I've have been very, very supportive of uh, professional baseball. And I actually think Portland uh, could actually uh, sustain a uh, major league club. If the city of Portland can support it, I think it would be a great thing for the city of Portland. I love this ballpark. I know it would take a lot of work. We need to get some natural grass in here, but I love coming down down here and if it's something that the fans want and the city can fund it would be a great thing Dave Niehaus the voice of the Mariners how many years strong now Dave well this is 30 here in Seattle uh, I'm beginning I, I, I was here for the first pitch in 1977 and here I am in 2006. God, what memories. How did you get started in this business? Well, I was uh, I was going to be a dentist and I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning and knew I couldn't stare down somebody's throat and do that the rest of my life. And I'd broadcast basketball games at Madison Square Garden, the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, and I, mean, I, I just got lucky more than anything else. What's your greatest Mariner memory? There must be thousands of them. Well, I guess my greatest Mariner memory is the first pitch uh, in 1977. I'm Tom with Rockstar Energy Drink, and you're watching PD Exposed. Cheers. We're outside the Lotus for a kickin' Mardi Gras party. Now, Mardi Gras is all about having a good time. A little bit of bling bling, some kick ass music, great food, great drinks. But do you know what Mardi Gras means? Didn't think so. Let's go find out if the rest of Portland knows. Do you know what Mardi Gras means? It means Fat Tuesday. The religious meaning is Shrove Tuesday. You're good. Where did you learn that? You're not only cute, but you're smart. So, what's the significance of the beads? I know, but tell me, what's the significance of the beads? The significance of the beads is you always want what you can't have. Usually we want to go crazy, but tonight, it's an excuse. Why is it that all you chicks go so freaking crazy, but you don't go crazy other nights of the year. We do! We just don't show it as She was barely 21 sitting at the bar. Little did I know she would break my heart. I would sell my soul just to be with her. Even if it meant that I could never be with another girl. What's been the highlight of the night for you? Uh, so far, it's been boobs boobs and more boobs. That's a great highlight. There's no such thing as a low light at Fat Tuesday. There's no such thing as anything not a highlight. What's funny is these beats are so valuable right now, but, but in about five hours, they're worth nothing. Nothing until next year. You know that Fat Tuesday at Lotus gets crazy when it's 7.30 and there's two chicks on stage making out. Mardi Gras be without good food. Check this out. Okay, you guys just saw the food that I had. It was incredible. I actually ate every morsel that was on the plate, but now I'm thirsty. We got light rum. We got dark rum. We got pineapple. We got OJ. And we got amaretto. And there we go. We got a hurricane. Why do chicks consider a night like this a license to just get freaking crazy? Everybody wants to be an exhibitionist. This is the one time it's license, license tail. What's the craziest thing you've done to get beads, man? Oh man, I just ask. You don't have to do anything. Tom's a little, Tom's suave, man. You, why should you? Just stand there, you're Tom, you just get beads.
caricatures by Steve right here. He's going to do some description of me. Uh, I'm not very good looking, so he's probably going to be really ugly, but I'm a mama for it. What do you think? I'm not a uh, magician. I'm an artist, so I'm going to do my best. First, I look at the shape of the head. It's got dark eyes. It's got a pretty good size nose. My call is done. Ready to see it. PD Exposed is brought to you by PDX Magazine, Portland's where to go, what to do guide featuring live music, restaurants, nightlife, local sports, and latest trends. Pick up this month's issue today or download your free copy at pdxmagazine.com. My name is Storm Large from Storm and the Balls and you're watching PD Exposed. This local music segment is brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink. We have a new sponsor on PD Exposed for our music segment, and how appropriate, it's Rockstar Energy Drink. Well, you guys have to have been living under a rock to not know who our next star performer is on PD Exposed, because she has been pretty much hugely large all over Portland for, for many years, actually, and she's large, large, large today in Portland. Storm Large. <laughs> You're making me feel really fat. No, she's not fat. P-H-A-T fat. It is really Storm Large. It's Susan Storm Large is my actual real name. It takes so much freaking energy to do what you do. Where the hell does it come from? I think it's, it's, I have to. I feel compelled to do it. I always have. That's kind of why I ended up on stage. When you're having a bad day though, when you, when you have to suck it up and get up on stage and be super nice and super funny, because you, she's very, very funny. When, when, you, when you have to be that way, sometimes, like for me, like when I gotta be on stage, I just wanna tell everybody to go. See, that's the thing, when I'm on stage, I can tell people to go. Yes, you can. And that's funny. We saw her at Wilts the other night, and, and you, you have sort of a more PG-13 burlesque sort of cabaret show. Tell us about that side of it, and then we'll talk about this side of it. Um, well, it gets a little it gets a little punchy over there, too, um, because it's me, and I'll start talking about something. I mean, a lot of the songs, I introduce them, and then and then people want me to tell stories, and, and that's kind of part of the show. you got to wait until you're 21 to have alcohol. But I want you to look around the room at the folks drinking, the folks who are old enough to be drinking, and watch them become more attractive <laughs> and much funnier as the night progresses and the alcohol is consumed. It's really intimate and everybody can hear really well and it's a nice mellow atmosphere. Tell us about the songs you're going to sing for us and what we should expect to sing. Probably for licensing purposes, I should I should have you guys do our original songs. Um, so that would be my favorite, one of my favorite love songs, which is called I Want You to Die. How sweet. It is sweet. It means I love you. Because you're take anything and mold it into something dangerous. It is so amazingly powerful and there's such a stage presence and she's so sultry and sexy. Sounds like you kind of want her. Oh, totally. <laughs> she's pretty hot too, isn't she? Oh, she's smoking. Dude, your shirt, like, it's like the perfect shirt for the night though. See, my wood is feeling naughty.
Tell us about your balls. I love my balls. My balls are Jimmy Jam's beaten, awesome keyboard player, Brian Boom Boom McFeather Parnell on drums, who is also brilliant, fantastic, Hot Rod Davey Nipples, who is very sexy and incredible. So I've got aces in my band, and they're just great. I don't want to play Thanks for watching this 40th episode of PD Exposed. We hope you tune in next time. And thanks to our title sponsor, PDX Magazine. Portland's Where to Go, What to Do Guide. Now available at Albertsons, Fred Meyer, and QFC. Thanks also to Comcast and Latitudes. And of course, Rockstar, London Influence, where they say there's no such thing as a bad hair day. And of course, the showroom. Make sure to cast your vote today at PDExposed.com for your favorites based on 12 categories. We're going to bring you those results in a one-hour special this summer, but it all depends on you guys. Go to PDExposed.com and vote today. See you next time. Make good memories, everybody. So now, have you? This is pretty, it's pretty dangerous. Wow, <laughs> it's loud back there too. If you want, do you want to turn around? Is it excuse to look at my butt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just easier to size you this way. Okay, so my first album I ever had was Have You Never Been Mellow, Olivia and john I was a little kid, and I used to take the album and I used to make out with her album. My mom one day, like my mom, my dad, somebody grabbed this album and they're like, where are Olivia Newton-John's lips? John Olsen. It's a true story. It's really <laughs> That's <good>. amazing. <laughs>